Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our midweek um, prayer broadcast. I want to start with uh, a call to prayer from the 93rd Psalm. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunder of mighty waters, more majestic than the waves of the sea, majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. I'm glad that you are able to join us this morning, wherever you may be. Many of you may be like me at home, trying to conserve gasoline, trying not to add to the panic that has led to 80% of the gas stations in the Raleigh metropolitan area being without fuel. And that, folks, has been created by panic, not by shortage. And that's, um, I found that reflected today in the devotion from this little thing, which I don't usually look at, but I opened it this morning, Our Daily Bread. And this Devotion really spoke to me, the devotion for May the 12th. After a, a painful minor surgery on my left eye, my doctor recommended a vision test. With confidence, I covered my right eye and read each line on the chart with ease. Covering my left eye, I gasped. How could I not realize I had been so blind? While adjusting the new glasses and renewed vision, I thought of how daily trials often cause me to be spiritually nearsighted. Focusing only on what I could see up close, my pain and ever-changing circumstances, I became blind to the faithfulness of my eternal and unchanging God. With such a limited perspective, hope became an unattainable blur. First Samuel 1 tells the story of another woman who failed to recognize God's trustworthiness. I guess this was written by a woman. It says another woman. The story of a woman who failed to recognize God's trustworthiness while focusing on her current anguish, uncertainty, and loss. For years, Hannah had endured childlessness and endless torment from Penina, the other wife of her husband, Elkanah. Hannah's husband adored her, but contentment evaded her. One day, she prayed with bitter honesty. When Eli the priest questioned her, she explained her situation. As she left, he prayed that God would grant her request. Though Hannah's situation didn't change immediately, she walked away with confident hope. That's really two really important words, confident hope. I almost think that another word for confident hope is joy which I preached on Sunday and talked about the fact that joy is a choice. Happiness comes and happiness goes. And uh, we're not guaranteed happiness, but joy is something that we choose. Her prayer in 1 Samuel 2 reveals a shift in Hannah's focus. Even before her circumstances improved, Hannah's renewed vision changed her perspective and her attitude. She rejoiced in the ongoing presence of God, her rock and everlasting hope. And the question for reflection is, how will focusing on God's unchanging nature instead of your circumstances give you greater hope? Where are you currently struggling with spiritual nearsightedness? Now, I know in my particular case, I, I mentioned Sunday that I struggle with this whole thing. I worry. And, and the latest is the fact that we don't have any gasoline. I have three automobiles. Between the three of them, I have enough gasoline to get my son to graduation in Cullowee on Friday. But, of course, it's between the three of them. It's not all in one car. And then once we get there, if there's no gasoline there, we won't have any way to get back. Because I'm certainly not taking enough gasoline with us to get back. It wouldn't be safe. I know that this situation will pass, that the situation will remedy itself, and hopefully in time for us to get there. But still, it kind of hovers over everything that I'm trying to do today, including preparing for this. How will focusing on God's unchanging nature instead of your circumstances give you greater hope? Where are you currently struggling with spiritual nearsightedness? Well, you just heard where I'm struggling. Where are you struggling? So let's pray. God, please renew my vision so I can focus on your constant presence and live with an eternal perspective in all circumstances. Amen. That was a great devotion, and I needed that today. Um, somebody way back when divided Scripture into different little passages, and there's a thing called the lectionary, and the lectionary takes all of those passages and splits them up over three years. And with each lectionary reading, there's a psalm, a reading from the Old Testament, a reading from the New Testament, and a reading from the book of Acts or the writings of Paul. 
usually it's divided up for Sundays. There's a Sunday lectionary, and I often use my, I pick scriptures from that lectionary for that particular week, and that's what I preach from. And that helps me to move through scripture and try to cover all of it in my preaching and not just focus on one particular book. There's also a thing called the daily lectionary, where you can actually use that lectionary to guide your reading of scripture and your devotions. And the, what, the daily scripture for today is Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 21. Let me share that with you. You shall put these words of mine in your heart and soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you're at home and when you're away and when you lie down and when you rise. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give them as long as the heavens are above the earth. What this is talking about is the Jewish practice of wearing a phylactery. The men would wear a little leather box about that big, about that big, and i make a little square there. The leather box would be worn a strap on your forehead and you would wear one on your arm and within it you would have a little passage of scripture written and the idea being that that passage of scripture is so close to you that you keep it in your thoughts at all times. And um, typically what goes in the phylactery, I think it may vary, but typically is uh, at least the Shema or one line of the Shema. The Shema means to hear. And many of you have heard this before. The Shema is the Lord our God, the Lord is one, which is a strange way of saying that there is only one God. But that's really what it means. The God of Israel is the only true God. It's a reminder of the fact that God is sovereign and God is watching over us. Um, I mean, it's a physical reminder of that rather than just trying to keep it in your heart or memorize it by having it actually attached to your body. I mean, you, you can almost read this as it says, uh, bind them as a sign on your hand. I mean, how about a tattoo on your wrist with a Bible verse on it? It's the same idea, to keep you ever mindful of who God is. So um, the Shema and this passage of Scripture, Deuteronomy 11, are actually part of the longer morning prayers that... Uh, devout Jews use Orthodox and, and typically Orthodox Jews will use these prayers every morning. It's part of a long set of prayers and I want to actually use that this morning because I think it's really good to get us focused on who God is. So let me read to you what is actually the content of the morning prayers of Orthodox Jews. And in here you will hear not only the passage that I read but also that Shema, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, or our God is one God. Let's pray. Praised are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, creating light and fashioning darkness, ordaining the order of all creation. You illumine the world and its creatures with mercy. In your goodness, day after day, you renew creation. How manifold your works, O Lord. With wisdom you fashion them all. The earth abounds with your creations, uniquely exalted since earliest time, enthroned on praise and prominence since the world began, eternal God. With your praise and prominence since the world began, eternal God. With your manifold mercies, continue to love us our pillar of strength, protective rock, sheltering shield, sustaining stronghold. Our praiseworthy God with vast understanding fashioned the rays of the sun. The good light he created reflects his splendor. Radiant lights surround his throne. His heavenly servants in holiness exalt the Almighty, constantly recounted his sacred glory. Praise shall you be yours, Lord our God, for your wondrous works, for the lights you have fashioned, the sun and the moon which reflect your glory. Our rock, our redeemer, the king, the creator of holy beings, you shall be praised forever. You fashion angelic spirits to serve you. Beyond the heavens, they all await your command. In chorus, they proclaim with reverence words of the living God, eternal king. Adoring, beloved, and choice are they all, and all fulfilling their creator's will. In purity and sanctity, they raise their voices in song and psalm, extolling and exalting, declaring the power, praise, holiness, and majesty of God the great, mighty, awesome king, the Holy One. One to another, they vow loyalty to God's kingship. One to another, they join to hallow their creator with serenity, pure speech, and sacred song in unison, chanting with reverence, Holy, 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 Adonai Zvaot, the whole world is filled with his glory. As in the prophet's vision, soaring celestial creatures roar, responding with a chorus of adoration. Praised be the glory of the Lord throughout the universe. To praiseworthy God they sweetly sing, the living, enduring God they celebrate in song. For he is unique, doing mighty deeds, creating new life, championing justice, sowing righteousness, reaping victory, bringing healing. Awesome in praise, sovereign of wonders, day after day in his goodness he renews creation. So sang the psalmist, praise the creator of great lights, for his love endures forever. 
cause a new light to illumine Zion. May we all soon share a portion of its radiance. Praised are you, Lord, creator of lights. Deep is your love for us, Lord our God, boundless your tender compassion. You taught our ancestors life-giving laws. They trusted in you, our Father and King. For their sake, graciously teach us, Father, merciful Father. Show us mercy. Grant us discernment and understanding. Then we will study your word, heed its words, teach its precepts, and follow its instruction, lovingly fulfilling all its teachings. Open our eyes to your word. Help our hearts cleave to your laws. Unite all our thoughts to love and revere you. Then shall we never be brought to shame. Trusting in your awesome holiness, we will delight in your deliverance. Bring us safely from the ends of the earth and lead us in dignity to our holy land. You are the source of deliverance. You have called us from all peoples and tongues, constantly drawing us near to you that we may lovingly offer you praise, proclaiming your oneness. Praised are you, Lord, who loves his people. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Take to heart these instructions with which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign in your head and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. If you obey the commandments that I enjoin upon you this day, loving the Lord your God and serving him with all your heart and soul, I will grant the rain for your land in season, the early rain and the late. You shall gather in your new grain and wine and oil. I will also provide grass in the fields for your cattle, and thus you shall eat your fill. Take care not to be lured away to serve other gods and bow to them. For the Lord's anger will flare up against you, and he will shut up the skies so that there will be no rain, and the ground will not yield its produce. And you will soon perish from the good land that the Lord is assigning to you. Therefore impress these my words upon your heart. Bind them as a sign on your hand, and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead, and teach them to your children reciting them when you stay at home and when you're away, when you lie down and when you get up, and inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, to the end that you and your children may endure in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to assign to them as long as there is a heaven over the earth. The Lord said to Moses as follows, Speak to the Israelite people and instruct them to make for themselves fringes on the corners of their garments throughout the ages. Let them attach a cord of blue to the fringe at each corner. That shall be your fringe. Look at it and recall the commandments of the Lord and observe them so that you do not follow your heart and eyes and your lustful urges. Thus you shall be reminded to observe all my commandments, commandments and to be holy to your God. I am the Lord. I am your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I, the Lord, your God. Your teaching is true and enduring. Your words are established forever. Awesome and revered are they, eternally right, well-ordered are they, always acceptable. They are sweet and pleasant and precious, good and beautiful and beloved. True it is that eternal God is our King, that the God, rock of Jacob is our protecting shield. He is eternal, and his glory is eternal. He is God for all generations. His sovereign throne is firmly established. His faithfulness endures for all time. His teachings are precious and abiding. They live forever. For our ancestors, for us, for our children, for every generation of the people Israel, for all ages from the first to the last, his teachings are true and everlasting. True it is that you are the Lord our God, even as you were the God of our ancestors. Our King and our Ancestors King, our Redeemer and our Ancestors Redeemer, our Creator, our Victorious Stronghold. You've always helped us and saved us. Your name endures forever. There is no God but you. You were always the help of our ancestors, a shield for them and their children, our Deliverer in every generation. May you abide in the pinnacle of the universe. Your just decrees extend to the ends of the earth. Happy the one who obeys your laws, who takes to heart the words of your Scriptures, you are in truth, Lord of your people, their defender and mighty king. You are first and you are last. We have no king or redeemer but you. You rescued us from Egypt, redeemed us from the house of bondage. The firstborn of the Egyptians were slain. Your firstborn were saved. You split the waters of the sea. The faithful you rec rescued, the wicked drowned. The waters engulfed Israel's enemies. Not one of the arrogant remained alive. Then your beloved sang hymns and, acc and acclamation, extolling you with psalms and adoration. They acclaimed God King, great and awesome, source of all blessings, the ever-living God, exalted in majesty, who redeems the meek, helps the needy, and answers his people's call. Praises to God supreme, ever praised is he. Moses and the people of Israel sang with great joy this song to the Lord. Who is like you, Lord, among all that is worshipped? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, working wonders? The redeemed sang a new song for you. They sang in chorus at the shore of the sea, acclaiming your sovereignty. The Lord shall reign throughout all time. Rock of Israel, rise to Israel's defense. 
Our Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Praise it are you, Lord, Redeemer of your people. Amen. That's a long prayer of praise. Beautiful. That's how you praise the Lord, folks. And that is what Orthodox Jews do every day. Those are very likely the same prayers that Jesus would have prayed in the morning. And as I read those, the question is, how am I going to take God's Word and keep it close to me, not in a box on my head or arm, and keep that word close to me so that I'm ever mindful of it and never slip into that kind of despair and never become short-sighted as we read in the early devotion. We do have some prayer concerns today. Continue to remember the family of Sue Sebast. Uh, she died last week. Her funeral service will be this coming Saturday at Montlawn at 5, visitation before at 4.30. Vicki Graham had surgery in Durham and I believe is now home, so we thank God for successful surgery and pray for her recovery. Carol Harris is in Rex Rehab in Apex, not Rex Rehab in Raleigh. She'll be there probably for at least a couple of months. No visitors allowed. Her daughter can visit her one day a week, so pray for her to get her strength back. Betsy Youngblood is looking at some more appointments with her doctor next week, but her, her procedures so far have been successful and things look good. On the other hand, her mother Eleanor is not doing well, and she asks for prayers for Eleanor as she reaches the end of her life. And there are many others that you're aware of, and please keep all those in our congregation that you know of who are sick or in difficult situations in your prayers. Let's go to the Lord. Almighty God, today we pray for the people of this congregation, especially those whom we've already named aloud. We pray for all of those who suffer and those in trouble. We pray for the victims of mass shootings in the United States, having had another couple of them last week that we were made known, made known to us in the news. They seem to happen so often, God, now that we don't even notice. So we pray for all people who are in situations of trouble in our country. We pray for the concerns of our local community, most most prominently right now, God, we pray that gasoline would be brought back to our area so that we can go about our business and do the things that we need to do, like work and go to school. We pray for the world and its peoples and its leaders. We pray for the people of India who are dying three or 4,000 a day from COVID. We pray for the people of Israel and Gaza where the violence has broken out again and the Israelis are once again using disproportionate response and killing hundreds of people, uh, civilians included. We pray for the earth that you have given to our care, that we would not destroy it in our use of it. And we pray for your church, the church everywhere, its leaders, its members, and its mission. We pray especially for the United Methodist Church in a time of discernment and division. And we give you thanks for our own bishop, Pope Morgan Ward, who will be retiring in September, even as we pray for the person who will replace her in the interim until November of 22, and then for the bishop who will serve us for eight years following that. Hear us now, God, as we join together and pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's a little longer than I normally go, but I felt compelled this morning. So the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the community of the Holy Spirit be yours now and always. Amen. Have a great day. God bless you.